And there we go. We're underway here at the Stadium of Light. Middlesbrough playing in changed blue. Some of the course in their traditional red and white stripes. And there's still people making their way to their seats, and it's a very busy gate in the Stadium of Light this afternoon. It's probably over 40,000 in yeah, here. Yeah, easily. I'd say, what, 2,000 or so Middlesbrough up into that top tier to our left hand side. Made good noise as well a few minutes before kickoff. You see there the Sunderland fans, it is this moment in time getting behind the lads. Anthony Bark going back to Anthony Patterson. Jack Clark trying to get in down the left hand side. He was the creator of Sunderland's consolation goal, it ended up being against Swansea. In a game which was spoilt by that sending off by Luke O'Neill. Yeah, He's it, not too far away from us, no, so <laughs> broadcasting for someone else this afternoon. Yeah, and it was, yeah, it looked like it was going to be a decent game, and to be fair, it still was. You, you know, you give the lads massive credit, they kept on going, you go a goal down, you know, they, they had to work really hard off the ball, but got themselves back level. But unfortunately, we couldn't hold on for, you know, it was five minutes or so, and there's, there's Luke, there's you Luke. see there. He's not playing with us, he's playing with uh, the Sky lads. Yeah, chatting away there. We had Julio on. Yeah, that's no, it's good to catch up with him, yeah, I haven't seen him for a while, and we'll see him after the game as well. Yeah, Julio Walker joining us on SFC Live this afternoon in the post-game programme as well, so do join us for that. Sunderland pressurising. We saw that early, didn't we, against Swansea, and it did the trick. Yeah, it's interesting, you see... Um, Middlesbrough set up straight from the kickoff. How many times you see a team go back to a defender and they just launch it long? Where Middlesbrough there, kickoff, so, like you've got possession. They looked after it, got 10, 12 passes in, and I think that's what Michael Carrick will want to see from his side. And you can see by the results, they've been in confident mood, picking up some great results and got themselves up the table. Yeah, he's done a great job, hasn't he, Michael Carrick? His first proper job, if you like. He was caretaker of Manchester United, which is no, no small thing. But yeah. this is his, his first full-time role, shall we say? Yeah, straight in at the deep end there, wasn't he? Patterson comes and gathers and stops Matt Crooks getting anywhere near it. He was a bit of a target man, but it's the man behind him, yeah. Tuba Akpom, who's got the goals this season. Top scorer in the league. He is, yeah, just in that 10 roll, isn't he? Just in behind. Crooks. As we mentioned, both teams in that 4 2 3 1 matching each other up. Hume, goes back to Ballard. Of course, this was a fixture earlier in the season where Sunderland were beaten by a goal to nil, Danny, and Ross Stewart was the headlines that night because pulled yeah, out in the warm-up. He did, didn't he? He'd done his thigh in the warm-up and, uh, yeah, I thought first half we were disappointing. Had a lot of the ball in the second half and I think Alex Pritchard wasn't had a glorious chance early on. Was, yeah, I was going to say he's off there, Ross. It's good to see, though, just playing on the shoulder of the centre-halves. I think it's on Dale Fry on that far side. Just goes a fraction early there, Ross. But, yeah, it is, and it's a disappointing one. You come up against your, your local rivals and you want to come away with something unfortunately we didn't that 1-0 that night wasn't it certainly was and then that was the last time we saw Ross Stewart for a couple of months it's Dara Lenehan at the back he's come in for Paddy McNair so many crossovers with Sunderland and Middlesbrough personnel even the manager's got history there. Yeah, listing the players, and there's one just sat below us there, Lee Catamol. I think he's in with Jimmy this afternoon as his guest. Picked up in the middle, though. By McCree. He scored in that game down at the Riverside. And Evans has been yeah. accused of making the foul, but it's Evans who comes off worse. Just looking at holding his left knee there, you see. He's come off second together best, more than he? anything. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't think that's a foul. He's, he's gone to lean in, I think, there, McGree. And let's have a look. He's, tripped, he's almost tripped over Corey's boot, hasn't he? His left boot. And you see Corey coming off second best. 
touch, they don't. Maybe the banged knees. Yeah, it's holding it outside of his knee. But you'll see that with McCree, I think, playing on that left-hand side, but he will go across the pitch and open up the space for Giles, the left-back, to get forward. It's been unfortunate there, Evans, to concede the free kick. Looks to be in some discomfort. Yeah, and you're just looking to the bench there. If you got there, obviously, probably Abdullah Bar. Yes, yeah, done well bench in recent week. you as well, haven't you? But Alice Taylor's on the bench as well. He got Jefferson Bennett, as I say, Michu Bailey Wright. Yeah, so you're looking at Michu there or, or Bar, aren't you? Thinking, I think. As Michu was warming up. Yeah, but has gone out as well. Bar's gone out as well, hasn't he? But Michu has took off his big coat. He's been told to get extra warm. Michael Carrick. I wonder he's thinking about the opening exchanges here. There's nothing really been given away by either side in terms of any tactics we weren't expecting. So hopefully Corey can continue. Big asset to well, the he side. Is, yeah, I, I don't feel that we've got that natural replacement. You know, you see Dan Neal's done it really well in recent weeks when Corey hasn't played. He's almost been the senior. Senior of the pairing in the middle when he's played with Barrow, when he's played with Michu. It's done really well. Yeah, is that one of those ones, Danny, where it's cold and you just take a knock on the side of your Possibly, muscle? Possibly, yeah, there's not, not a lot of metres around the no. sort of kneecap area as well. And you can catch one in the wrong place there, you can feel it. As we do have this free kick, it's came in and... Brave header from Ross Stewart, but the ball's still loose until a shot comes in and passes behind it. Yeah, caught it quite well. I mean, a couple of opportunities to clear it there. We don't deal with it too well. See, it drops down. Ross on the first one. Patrick misses the ball. Lenehan with a shot. Yeah. Could get real Set. power behind it, although he did get a good swivel on it. Flicked on by Trey Hume. Just too much on it for Roberts, who's had in an advanced position ahead of him. Yeah, it's not a bad outlook, Trey Hume. He's, he's got a good spring, hasn't he? He's not the biggest, but... He's quite brave, isn't thinking, he? Yeah, look at down at uh, Blackpool, wasn't yep. it, for Ross's goal. He got himself in there and cushioned that one in for Ross. And he is an outlet for, for Anthony Patterson to drop a ball onto him. Corey Evans is back on the pitch. Dan Ballard coming through with the header there. Comes back from Lenehan. Danny Bart jumps. Dan Neal tries to get something on it. Ballard's going to have to be alert here. Patterson's the maybe the easier choice, but he goes forward and has been called offside anyway. Yeah, could have perhaps let it go there, the referee. Anyway, good possession, Patrick. I think the um, coaching staff are keeping an eye on Corey Evans here because Mishu has been called back from warming up. Yeah, you just see him, he's, he's back out there, but he is hobbling, isn't he? Oh, it goes to Ahmad! Oh. Great opportunity for Ahmad! Oh, oh he's going it's wide. wide! Oh, let off for the keeper. Stefan, you see him there, apologising to his defenders, plays it straight to Ahmad, and you'd back him, wouldn't you? You'd not get a better opportunity than that this afternoon, you'd think. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, Zach Stefan. Oh, it's casual, isn't it? And he plays it there, and he can take your pick, really, from Ahmad. I can't believe he's missed the target. Goes for the right corner, just takes a bobble as it approaches the goal. Let's just have a look. Oh, I can do him at his near post, can't he? Goes yeah, across him. Either way, he knows that's a big chance, Massive Ahmad. chance. Right from Zach Steffen, the keeper on loan from Man City, the American. Big challenge in front of the dugouts. Someone get the throw. Trey Hume again, showing he's not scared of going those challenges. Yeah, that's what the fans love on a, on a derby day, isn't it, one of them? Ahmad shrugged off the ball, and here comes Middlesbrough. I think we might see Mishu in a couple of moments here. He's getting stripped. Yeah, Corey Evans has gone down with that injury. And that's, again, disappointing for Sunderland at an early stages of a game here at the Stadium of Light, being forced into changing their philosophy and maybe you know their shape as well yeah it is yeah isn't it you're losing your, your captain aren't you your leader out there and 
big blow for him, less than 10 minutes, well, just coming up to 10 minutes on the clock as well. And it is going to be Mitru, you say, Frankie, getting ready down there. Not ideal having to make a change so early on in the game. Just the outside of his left knee, isn't it? You can see him holding it there. Pete Brand having a look at him. That's well, another big opportunity for Edouard Michu. He's made the majority of his appearances from the bench, Danny, and he's, you know, he comes from a very high stock, of course, on loan from PSG. Yeah, just trying to get going here, isn't he, really? He's fits and starts, had a couple of, couple of outings in recent weeks, and I think down at Wigan, wasn't it? He started quite well in the, in the first half down at Wigan, but he needs to get straight into it here now this afternoon. Corey there handing the armband over to Danny Bart. Disappointing for Corey. Captain, of course. offside again there. There's a couple already. He's a big old unit, isn't he, Crooks? I think Dan Bollard's won a couple of headers early on up against him. Yeah, Crooks has joined, actually joined Middlesbrough back in 2021 from Rotherham. Previously played at Northampton. He had a short, unsuccessful spell at Rangers. Started his career at Huddersfield. Yes. Rightfully so, Ross yeah. gets a free kick there. And they were the ones Ross we wasn't, wasn't getting last week, you're going to yeah. say, aren't you, against Swansea, yeah. Keith Stroud a little reluctant. <laughs> yes. So we're not talking about James Lennington in the post-game programme. Release him. Can Roberts get there? Tries to chop it over the top of Giles. Yes, good switch from Danny Bart. Of course, Robert spent some time at Middlesbrough as well. One of his famous loan spells. Yeah, it's one of them where he had sort of between 10 and 20 games at a few clubs, didn't he, Patrick? Yeah. And as you say, Middlesbrough was one of them. Ahmad. Of course, Michael Carrick will know from his Manchester United background. Someone's offside. I yeah, think it's Patrick Roberts. Patrick it's tight. Roberts. That it's right on Very the linesman's tight. toes, actually. When Anthony Patterson's dropped the ball on him, he's a player. Tight one. Quite far back, though. Just see the energy there from Middlesbrough. You know, we yeah. have good possession in in their half of the pitch, and they forced us back. You know, a lot of teams will come up here, won't they, and just sit off and allow us to have the ball around that halfway line area. Right. Good turn there in the middle. Mishu pokes it through as well. Onside. It's onside. Ahmad, who is onside. Can he get a shot away? Cuts back. He was trying to get a clear opportunity on his right foot, maybe. That's why he cut back. Maybe he should have took the shot on. Yeah, possibly. It's on his left foot, his favoured left foot, isn't it? He might feel the angles against him. Oh, he's been chopped down there as Jack Clark. He might see a booking here as well. And it will be. He's hurt himself, Housen, as well. He likes getting involved in those, yes, doesn't yeah. he? Well, John Housen gone down as well. Yeah, going back to that one for Ahmad. It's on his left foot, doesn't he? Just maybe pull the trigger across, but he's done it a few times, hasn't he, this season, where perhaps he, he does look to chop back and open it up, but the opportunity went away. I see similar to Corey Evans there, Johnny Housen just catching one, and he's gone down as well, injured. There's a good opportunity, though, for Sunderland. Ahmad being played in there. 
Once again, suddenly get the better of that back line. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah, a couple of occasions now, isn't it, in behind them. It's similar to Corby Evans. Very similar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, gives the free kick away and then... Hurt himself. Catches himself, yeah. Very cold in the northeast this afternoon. Nelson just this is yellow card as well. Confirmation yellow. Yeah. It's always nice when you get up from that. Three degrees currently in the Stadium of Light. 16 minutes past 12 on a Sunday afternoon in January. Lovely and toasty that compared to how it's been the last few days, isn't it? In the minus. We are expecting loads of minus three later today, though. Probably best that we had the early kickoff. What are they going to do here? Clark who knocks it in, comes out to Ahmad, takes a deflection, took the sting out of it really. Yeah, well it was Patrick actually, wasn't it? Patrick Roberts on his left foot, he bends it in there. Not a bad ball in, bit of confusion back there. I think it's Dale Fry that gets his head on it. And I say it drops to Ahmad on his right foot and gets a good strike on it, but I think it's Tuberak. Pom just gets his block in. Seemed to take a, an edge, didn't it, to drop to him. crowd behind Stefan since that early incident. He's just a little bit casual on the ball, hasn't he, Stefan? You see there, goes back to him, not a great touch, goes behind him a little bit and has to, to dig the clearance out. Akpong gets it in the middle and plays it out left to Giles, but Middlesbrough can't really advance from that. Chuba Akpong, someone you played with, I understand, Danny, at yeah, Forest, maybe? Yeah, at Nottingham Forest, yeah, young lad came in, I think, from Arsenal. Um, yeah, Going right. back a few years now, 10 years or so, so he's uh, 17, 18 at the time. And you see he's touching everything, quite nice on the ball, and obviously he's developed that and got himself a few goals. He's Ahmad, running at the defence once again, tries to go inside, it's behind Patrick Roberts, and Middlesbrough will turn out with it. They're going through the gears now, Middlesbrough coming through the middle. Short at this the back. This is McGree. Goes back out to Giles. They've got men over, it's a bad oh, ball though. Yeah, was it 5v3 for a moment there? 5v4 maybe. They didn't take advantage of that, did no, they? No, it was on, that was the ball. Just keep your eye out now, top of the picture. They've got one, two, three, four, yeah, 5v3 there driving at us and then it's the right ball, just puts too much on it. See, so just tries to stand it up to that far post area. Too much on it out the far side. But that's the area they'll be looking to get Giles into. That was, I think it was him that put the ball in, wasn't it, for McCree's goal down at the Riverside, and that's where they'll be looking to get him on the ball. Service in the box. Someone trying to get the ball back, but it's Middlesbrough who continue to advance on that far side. Falls with the ball, goes inside, it's cleared by Dan Neal. high line for Millsborough as they try to put pressure on Sunderland. Yeah, just having a little bit of the ball now, aren't they? Game's in the balance. That's at the 19th minute here at the Stadium of Light. Nil-nil. Here on SCFC Live. Broadcasting around the world, of course. Cut out in the middle by Roberts. Then he goes through the middle himself. Goes out wide to Amma. Dan neal has got ahead of him. Ross Stewart's the big switch. Mishu. Mishu. His pass was cut out. Daniel gets it back though. And Mishu caught on the ball. Gets the free kick. Yeah, it's cool. That's a lovely turn again by Daniel. We've seen that often, haven't we? From him. Pressured in behind, just rolls his man. And Mishu just got to be a little bit sharper on it. I know he's just come off the bench. A couple of balls gone into him there. Hasn't got the time he thinks he's got on it. Ballard. Just bobbled a bit there for Roberts, but it's only come forward. Hume, it's a great ball out wide. Clark's inside the area. Just shows too much there to Smith. Oh, it's gone down. Smith, yeah. Got doubled up on him there, Jack Clark. And is it running to Smith? He doesn't feel it's a foul. I see him asking the question to the referee. Probably minimal, we'll see it back now, you see there. Oh, <laughs> not sure what, I can see why he's looking a bit puzzled. I see Smith there, Tommy Smith, just having a little laugh. And <laughs> <laughs> I 
think Jack we, Clark we did. Every right to have a, a word with the ref, I think. Short from Patterson. Yeah, a little bit forced there. You see Patrick thumbs up, but come out to Trey Hume. I think he's got space in front of him to step into. in the middle and then goes back to Stefan Giles has got space if he can bring it down Roberts was quickly there Giles advances Hume gets a foot in it's an important one as well yeah he's done really well there Trey Hume because initially he's gone in with his man McCree and he's had to to work hard to get back at him, does really well. And the applause goes up around the stadium of light. For Sunderland fan, Fletcher Jackson, who lost his life recently. The whole stadium standing up, applauding that one. And the thoughts of everyone in Sunderland Football Club are with Fletcher's family, of course. Dan Neal in the middle of the park. Hugh. Cut out in the middle though. Neal wins it back. Oh, bit of a challenge which could have gone either way. Here's off for Middlesbrough. And then they pick up a foul. He just wants a quick word. An interesting one so far, Danny. Yes, yeah, Casey almost matching each other up as we say there. And you can see Middlesbrough, they're looking to get those balls into Hackney, into Housen, just playing through us like we like to do into Dan Neal from the back. And well, as it usually is, Corey Evans meets you as it is now. Offside. It's a tight one, that one. I was watching straight down the line of that one. He's had a couple of Ross, hasn't he? But you don't mind him playing on the shoulder. It just takes one, doesn't it, to, to catch him wrong side, as we've seen with Ahmad. Yeah, you don't need it. Before. Fry and Lenehan, who are the centre halves this afternoon, could be exposed if he does get in. Quite high, as you say, as well, Danny. Yeah, well, there was a lot of chat, I think, before the game in terms of, you know, they were looking maybe at playing Cameron Archer, who's quite quick, come on loan from Aston Villa, but they stuck with Crooks up top in the thought process as we're not the quickest at the back, you know. Very similar match sides, aren't yeah. they? Dropped off there for Roberts. Ahmad's gone through the middle, Roberts keeps on going, plays in Ahmad, it's a Go great on. reverse ball, and another one, comes to Patrick Roberts, falls for Moss Stewart, he's offside. offside! Yeah, first look straight at the linesman, Ross, just in the six-yard box, isn't he? But good play again, and we've seen it in recent weeks, haven't we? Patrick and Ahmad, connection down this right-hand side, it's a lovely build-up play. Let's have a look, Danny, was it offside? He's hovering at the top yeah, of the screen now. Ahmad, three great two move. in favour of Borough, but great from them two as well. And, yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's well off, isn't he? Yet yeah. 26 is a little bit deep, Lenehan, but Ross is a yard or two. The wrong side of him. Not too many complaints from the Sunderland players. It's always an indicator, isn't it? Initially. Yeah. Yeah, see Ross straight away looking at the linesman, wasn't he? Sees the flag up. It's over the top of Elise here. Manages to get his leg around it and clears it. Clark can't get anything on it. Just go out for a throw on the far side. As we look at things from the west stand here, the Stadium of Light. Coming up to 25 minutes played, nil-nil.
He's done all right so far, the ref in those ones. He's given a few, hasn't he? But he's see that one there, he's letting it try and go on. Meet you held back here it is again that one just have a look yeah do you know what he's gone early hasn't he looking for the one fizz the cross off Ahmad and then he's obviously a yard or two offside see there he's looking for that one it's a good pull back by the way and it's Patrick gets the strike away you can see he's two yards offside meanwhile here's Middlesbrough and Akpom causing all sorts of bother through the middle still on the ball fancy the shot takes a deflection in the end, didn't have much on it, but still Akpom yeah, dictating things a little bit. Saying, uh, yeah, he's, got, he's got that in his locker, he's nice on the ball, he shifts it well. He was strong there as well, wasn't he? Yep. Now, I think that big switch is on. They've gone narrow at the back middle, but when we've got the ball in and around the halfway line, you see them now, the back four, really narrow. Patrick's on for the switch. Jack will be on the other side as well. I think Mishu's just seen that. Said plays a short one. Dan Neal tries to poke it through for Ross Stewart's cut out in the middle by Lenehan. Elise here. Won it back for Sunderland. And Sunderland get the throw on the far side. Yeah, it was almost a tackle from Dan Neal, wasn't it? He sold short, I think Amaz played it back to him, and he's toe-poked it, and yeah. then Ross is, again, looking for that running behind. Getting really in the balance still. Both teams trying to suss each other out still. It's cliche, but it's kind of like a game of chess, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit KG. So we've certainly had the better opening so far. And a bit of bite about it as well because of the nature of the fixture. That's lovely for Mamad there. Roberts. Mishu. Roberts. Ahmad's ahead of him. He's in. He's on side. Oh, that's nice. Roberts. Roberts through the legs. Mishu. Dan Neal. Does he fancy one? Roberts. Dan Neal. Can he get a shot away? Ahmad, the crowd shouting, shoot. It's tight, isn't it? A lot it's of very tight. Back there. And again, Dan Neal looking for an opportunity. Oh, oh. Ross couldn't swing on it. Oh, I see fans around us waving their arms back, but it was difficult because, yeah, they've worked it really well up the pitch into the 18 yard box. But Middlesbrough, 10 bodies back there, it was difficult to find the pass. You know, crowd looking, pull the trigger, somebody shoot. We were denied the uh, Ahmad and Robert Shaw against Swansea, but those two have already yeah, linked up really, linked well. Up really well. Ball over the top, Ahmad, oh, is he in? in? He's in. Oh, oh Linesman's given it. I'm not sure, I see that one back, he's off the back of Lenehan. But that's the ball, left-hand side of the pitch, drop it in, you've got Ahmad pulling between, you see, look at the bottom of your picture, look at the space just that gone, Patrick's got gone. as well. Yeah, he is off, but it's busy get this the ball out to Patrick, you see the damage, you go back to the Reading game, yep. give him the ball with space to drive defenders back into that 18-yard box, it's going to cause problems. They're creating the chances and the openings, aren't they? I think Tony Mowbray will hope for a few more shots on target, though. Yeah. yeah. At this stage of the game, with the chances we've had. Where's this one going to drop? It's gone out, yeah. Yeah, it's gone out on the far side. Yeah, it was that big one, wasn't it? Ahmad he tucks that away. You know, nine times out of ten, he, he, he passes that into the bottom corner. He does that every day in training, you'd imagine. Mm. Just for fun. Big challenge from Danny Bart. Expect nothing else. Let's yeah, say so Danny obviously played for Middlesbrough as well, didn't he? Yes, Had another connection to there. this one. Yeah. They're all over. Even the half time guy, who will be one league catamull doing the lottery at half time. He's not doing the half time challenge where he has to chase the fan around the pitch and, <laughs> and slide tackle him as well, no? Do it against Grant Ledbetter or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, put the old boys back in. Against someone who works at Middlesbrough again. Hume cuts it out, but it goes to a 
for a shirt. Good challenge in the middle of the park from Dan Neal. Uh, Mishu tries to get away, he can. First he was stalled. It's tough again. Yeah. Well, everyone's given this linesman stick, but he's been spot yeah, on every time. Yeah, he early there. It's, it's good in there, isn't it? So Dan Neal makes another challenge. Is this a tactic from the back line just, from just Middlesbrough? Have a look at it now as Dan puts his head down. Yeah, he steps up, doesn't he? Yeah. Lenehan. Don't think he's too sure what's going on behind him. Takes a bit of a chance. Worked a treat so far for them. Four times, maybe five? Yeah. Middlesbrough's turn to advance. Half an hour played, nil-nil, inside the Stadium of Light. Between these two huge northeast clubs meeting once again in the championship. so deep doesn't he considering someone who's got all those yeah, goals you know, similar to I think Alex Pritchard when he plays in that 10 for us doesn't he goes looking for the ball at times if he's not seeing too much of it so they're trying to get it back they still can't Housen drops it off to the right McGree oh this could go anywhere oh, luckily for Sunderland it goes to Patrick Roberts pops one over the top looking for Ahmad can he get on the end of this Lanahan is out of position he can't get past him. Yeah, he fancy him as well. One on one there up against Lenahan. Does quite well, to be fair. Game's getting stretched here. Giles brings it forward. He's alone from Wolves this season, Ryan Giles. 22 years old. Big shift. Was oh, that offside? Yes, I thought so. Dan Neal. Starting to make his presence felt in the middle of the park, Dan Neal. And we always say it, if Dan Neal has a good game... Generally we do, don't we? Yeah. Yep. yep. He's Jack Clark on that far side. Trying to dance past those players, can't. He's not had too much joy yet, has he, Jack? And every time he's picked it up, it's Force helping Tommy Smith out at right back. It's Trey Hume again, who's trying to win it back for Sunderland. Right hand position there, Hume to chase the ball. Been quite effective doing that though. Yeah, he's getting back in there now. And he has, he's been he's been on the front foot, hasn't he? Going in there, looking to press to nick the ball. Mishu. Jack Clark. Under pressure, he's gonna have to. What's he gonna do? He's got lots of options. That's a, a great option he's taken up there with. Patrick Roberts now advancing on this right-hand side. Roberts, Ahmad, he's got time to turn. Oh, be a corner. First of the afternoon for yeah, Sunderland. Yeah, good players, and again in the middle of the park. I think Adjelisi does well. He doesn't buy the step overs from Force on the far side. Yep. And Patrick again involved with Ahmad getting us forward on this right-hand side. and do what they did at Shrewsbury. Score from a corner. Referee keeping an eye on that penalty area, Danny. It's very congested in there, lots of big bodies. Yeah, that's where you're looking at Danny Barth, aren't you? Ballard up yeah. from the back, get, getting on the end of this. Ross Stewart. It's floated in. Oh, there's a player gone down for Sunderland. Oh, let's give it. Let's give it against him. Yeah, Middlesbrough. As you said, congested in there, a lot of bodies. And is it Trey Hume that goes down? With Crooks, I think it was. Not pushing and shoving you see from corners, Danny. The yeah, majority I, I, of the decisions given are always for the defenders. Defending team, yeah. I think sometimes they're a bit of a gamble, aren't they? I mean, it's a lot in there. Trey Hume goes down first, then Crooks goes over the top of him. And I think, you know, the ref's only got one set of eyes at the end of the day, and he's got a, a lot to focus on in there. Balls momentarily left, and Middlesbrough take advantage of that with a possible opportunity from this charging through the middle. It's 
Laid off to the right hand side. Oh, it's a save. good right hand save from Anthony Patterson. It is, yeah. In the falls, end. isn't it? What a save that is. Falls. Yeah, they get a bit of look down this left hand side, but then they work it well across the pitch. Middles bit. Got the overload. Just into force, and he drives it, I think, through Alessi's legs. And what a save that is for Anthony Patterson to his right hand side from this angle. That's why he's number one. Yeah, good save. Corner for Middlesbrough. Make that their first corner as well there, Danny. Not to wait deep inside the first half. Johnny Housen will take it. Equally as busy. So it was for the Sunderland one just moments before. He's head the vacuum off. Good, I'm going to say Ross Stewart, I think. Yeah, it is it's in gone there. for another corner, Dan. As you were. Every Sunderland player inside Sunderland's penalty area. Yeah, it's always a discussion, this one, isn't it? You know, do well, we leave a player off? Sunderland put any, someone on the halfway line now. Probably takes two of their players yeah. back. Yeah, I know. I've been there as a player as well, and I always like to have a couple up. As you say, you clear it. it comes Someone's back again, there to yeah. get it. If, you, if, you, if you've got no one up there, yeah, it's coming back at you. It's towards the near post. Shouts of handball from the Middlesbrough fans. I guess that's what happens if no one's forward. Yeah, it's just. It's like, am I trying to make a run forward, isn't it? But not a lot for Trey Hume's a hit. It's a camera picked up here. Nah, it's off, it's off, it's off Trey the, Hume. Yeah, his right elbow, but Bounces knows nothing up, about yeah. him. All still in play. At least they're competing. It's Middlesbrough who come out with it, but it's a throw in the end after Crooks couldn't bring it under control. Yeah, he's done well, at least, hasn't he? Made some good tackles there, good and strong and powerful in the air up against Crooks and Force. It's a big game to come back into, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? Yeah. Both these sides, similar positions. Obviously, Middlesbrough high in the table at the moment. On four, Middlesbrough. Oh, the form side between the two. Don't curse the ref, but he's had an excellent game so far. 30 or 37, 38 minutes gone. James Lennington, it is. Um, seen him in the Premier League before, Danny, so. What you would think. Well, even they get it wrong sometimes, yeah. they're, they're big boys. Well, they know. sometimes come here and rely on the VAR, which is not there, <laughs> which we saw earlier this season. Anyway, Roberts crosses it right footed. Oh, oh, that's a good opportunity for Ross Stewart. He puts it over. Yeah, it's excellent. It's well worked from Patrick as well. He goes on his right foot. Don't see it often. Just shifts it a yard, doesn't it? It's a great ball in. Fizzed in there, what? Just outside the six yard box. You see Ross on the move. Gets across his man. Just can't keep over the top of it on the half volley. Good play from Patrick. It's a good opportunity. And you, you have to say, Sunderland's had the majority of the opportunities yeah, yeah, yeah. in this first half. Danny. Better opportunity, yeah. Middlesbrough, one or two openings, haven't they? Good save from Anthony Patterson a moment or two ago. But I think we've certainly been the better team. Downfield from Stefan. Elise jumps, gets there. Dan Neal comes in and keeps the ball for Sunderland. And then plays a good ball forward for Ahmad, who drops it off to Trey Hume. Roberts is with him. Roberts easily advances down that side. Still going. Nice. A couple of arms went up there from Middlesbrough players, but Ross times has run well. One of a sudden, well, Roberts yeah. is having a good game, yeah, isn't he? Been excellent. Yeah, just goes past his man there, didn't he? And agree, it was chucking him back. Then he just reverses it again into Ross's path, and as I said, Ross timed his run really well. Just had to come away from goal, though. But we've been bright, haven't we? Again, down this right hand side. Corner from Roberts. 
Paul says Trey Hume is involved once again. Yeah, difficult then. He makes that run. But then they help him out, they block his man off Trey Hume, so he gets free at the near post. You see there, but it's difficult. You, you know, you're a few yards past that near post area. You've got to try and turn your head, get it on target. Difficult one. Fans up early for the half-time refreshments here. Well, some of them might not have had their breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken, taken a while there, but they certainly haven't come here to get a draw, Middlesbrough. Stewart. Trying to release Elise here. Drops it off for Clark. Clark's got options here. Gets his head down, tries to beat his man. Frustrations there from the crowd because they feel he should have maybe crossed it. Yeah, well, Ross Stewart made a, a great run as well. He's one who actually plays it into the channel. Not sure oh. if we'll see it back. Force has gone down injured, but had an opportunity, Jack, I think, just to, to lend it. But I think because he's had quite a quiet half, he feels he's got to do a little bit more when he gets on the ball. And then again, opportunity went away. You see there, Ross plays it in. Just keep your eye on Ross Stewart now. Nobody matches him here yet. Yeah, off the back there, look there. Little reverse into that pocket. Maybe it's tight. Yeah, he's got two or three in the way. Yeah, and then it, by the time here, goes away, look, the body's that's where around. The come in before he Jack tries to Clark. do a pirouette on it, doesn't he? Again, Stefan taking a long time. Yes, yeah, problem is they, they're used to playing out from the back and then they know it's not on, we're pressing them high and then he's got to shell it long. Ballard trying to take ownership of the ball in the middle. He's hacked down in the end, nothing given. Play continues. Is there enough in that there for you, Danny, or not? As the ball's played in, we'll just stay with play. Corner for yeah, Middlesbrough. He's asking Dan Baller. He wrote a couple of challenges, didn't he? And he goes down. Ref doesn't give it. And I tell you, he does excellent there. Trey Hume, just keep your eye on it. Just say, Dan Ballard, he's out there in the middle of the pitch. Just keep your eye on the left hand side of your picture there. He's got Crooks there. He knows he's got Akpom outside him. And he does well here. He just steps across, makes the right decision, and gets the block in on Crooks. Good defending from Trey Hume. comes in again shouts a handball from Middlesbrough fans yeah they're looking down at it aren't they from the top tier <laughs> well, it's another corner for Middlesbrough so I think from the referee's view which is pretty much the same as ours looking into the bodies I couldn't see it let's have a look it's, no it's, well it's bang off Ross Stewart's chest there isn't well, it that's, that's what the shout handball not. was it a corner though it's come off Meet you. is there another touch I think oh, Michu's played it off Crooks. off Crooks yeah I think that's a goal kick isn't it yep fortunately it's not and it is Middlesbrough's fourth corner. Floated in a bit higher this time. At least they get ahead on it. Comes out to Giles. He'll try and pop it back in there. It's deep one. Passing comes. Doesn't get there. Does on the second try. And Sunderland fans are frustrated. Yeah, they didn't I'm get the numbers I'm forward I'm again. Ahmad's made a run as well. And maybe feeling. Can he release him early? Down that left hand side. But he slowed it down. Ahmad. Sullen ball. That comes off Trey Hume and it'll be a Middlesbrough throw. As we are inside the final minute of the first half. There will be some added time because of that injury first to Corey Evans and Houston is down for minute or so as well picked up a yellow card in that as well Johnny Housen is that the only one of the half the so only far, one of the half yeah. so far Danny Patterson was closed down there by Crooks and the it's Akpom who has it now rides the challenge of Dan Neal Akpom still going Ballard gets his foot in and it's another corner for Middlesbrough their fifth 
Gets down yeah. the mount up. Just got a little bit of slack we did there for a moment. Again, Akpom. I like him in there. He's busy, isn't he? Bright see again. He just rides the challenge of Dan Neal. Just trying to feed it across. Dan Bollard deals with it. Corner right at half time for Middlesbrough. Four minutes of added time there will be as well. Giles this time with the corner. It's Ahmad who gets the first connection, comes out to miss kick. Johnny Housen's miss kick still leaves Middlesbrough in possession of it though. So they're trying to step up. Ballard plays it out. Can Daniel get there? Ahmad does. Daniel takes it down. Sunderland trying to counter. Ahmad through the middle. Ross Stewart to the right. Mishu to the left. Ahmad holds onto it for now. Ahmad now gives it to Ross Stewart. Plays oh, it in the bet. middle. Oh, a bit oh. of confusion. Oh. But Mishu couldn't get in front of his man. It was a good counter. Yeah, it was indeed. Yeah, body's getting forward. It's a lovely ball from Ross, isn't it? And I think it's it Dale Fry or Tommy Smith. Get a little bit fortunate, try to clear it and don't deal with it, but Jack Clark's outside the action at the far post. Hooked forward there from Housen. Here it is again, just having a look back, see if we get numbers forward. Dan Neal involved, Ahmad again. Middlesbrough players get attracted to the ball and he just feeds it in there. And you see there, is it, is it Michu at the top of the picture? It is Michu, yeah. Yeah, can he get across the man, can he take a gamble? That was my first thought, but he couldn't on that occasion. The ball just taking an edge to drop in the middle. Another big challenge, referee sees play go on. And Stewart's feeling that one. He hasn't gone down, but he's definitely hurt. Yeah, it's, it's just together. one of those. He knows he's under it and it invites Dale Fry to come through and to with a forceful challenge, fair, but yeah, and he left a little bit on Ross as well. Elise again, making his presence felt. Yeah, done really well, he's just getting his distances right as well off. Danny Barton, see Stefan trying to drop it on force on the touchline, but Elise gets across, good towering header. Great header there from Roberts. Ballard. Hume. Under pressure, goes back to Patterson. Kicks it low, but it goes to Stewart. And he Bart. Elise. Jack Clark. Making his way across the pitch, picks up the free kick. Tony Mowbray was furious there about something. I'm not quite sure what he was indicating maybe just switching the ball a little bit quicker perhaps yeah i think you're right he's now <laughs> signaling <laughs> yeah the ball what you wanted yeah. to be played to patrick roberts across the pitch but he just like to bring it across rather than to play it long yeah i guess it's easier as well for us at times seeing it from up here looking down on the pitch as opposed to being pitch level Roberts gambles, Stewart gambles, shoots, it's a good save. Oh, get away with it again, Middlesbrough. And that's half right time, another time. good opportunity for Ross Stewart. Sunderland have been the better of the two sides, Danny. Yeah, certainly, yeah, good opportunities, and that one there right on half time. Dale Fry, I think it is, gets under it, and Ross had to wait for it to sit down, catches it well, but unfortunately straight at the goalkeeper, so... Yeah, I think out of the two managers, Michael Carrick will be the happier. Certainly that they're coming in at nil-nil, Middlesbrough. Certainly they're, Thanks, Danny. they're trying to play their way, trying to play out from the back. We haven't really allowed them to do so. And you can see Stefan, we're forcing him to kick it long. He's going out to that right-hand side to force. But Adji Elise is out there, you know, Adji's six foot two plus, isn't he? And he's Giles was successful as well in the first half on the left-hand yeah, side, wasn't he? Yeah, a couple he? of times getting forward, yep. Yeah. So maybe cut them out for something and stop Akpom dictating it in a little bit 
periods of time he did do that in the middle of the park. Yeah, I thought in the first off, he was their brightest player in a way, trying to get on the ball, as you said there. He was dropping deeper at times towards the halfway yes. line. And he's got good feet, he moves the ball quite well. Just got to keep an eye on him. Here's Danny Bart. This is Dan Ballard. There's a bit of pace on that, so he has to run to get it. Someone coming down on that far right hand side with Trey Hugh. We had a great first 45. It's a couple of nice switches, Danny Bart's hit, and it's on. I say time and time again there, back four, get really narrow. Jack Clark, trying to get around his men. Goes back and goes forward, then goes back to play it off for Mishu. Danny Bart. Stewart. Just couldn't get the pass back to it's Trey, Trey Hume, Hume again, isn't it? Yeah, as you say, coming off that right hand side. Here comes Middlesbrough on the counter attack. Dan Neal's got back, so they have got numbers back now. McGree comes forward with the ball, he's stopped. The referee says that's a free kick. And Trey Hume is involved again. Yeah, it's getting back in. It's good again from, I think it's Dan Neal. Getting back in, sitting in for him there, matching the run of McCree. Right, long ball forward, look for Crooks. Elise here tries to keep it in, he does. Ballard. And Roberts felt that one, but no foul. Giles. McGree gives it back oh. to Giles, a wild cross there. I think it just sat up on him as he's gone to cross that yeah. there, it looked like it popped up from, from up here on the gantry, yeah. Caught on his ankle. But as you are saying, that's what they're looking for, McGree, he comes really narrow and that allows the space for Giles to get up on the outside of him. Michael Carrick deep in thought there. It's interesting, we thought about what he might have said, but... Tony Mowbray surely would have just said more of the same, but take your chances, lads. Yeah, that's his only frustration, I think, yeah. Rightly so, you know, we could, have, we could and should have been a couple up for me at half-time. Here's McCree. Ahmad cushions it down to Robinson to heck of a ball forward. And Moss Stewart, can he get on the end of this one? He can. It's a neck-and-neck race. Neck oh. get the ball, he goes oh. down. What's the referee going to do? He's given it. He's given it. He's well, given it! It took forever, didn't it? Yeah, I'm just looking, the linesman's not flagged. Is there a red as well, though? Should it be a well, red? Yeah, of course should it should it be yeah. a red? He's last man, isn't he? Yeah, it is a red! Can't argue it, yeah. It's wrong side, isn't he, from the minute the ball's played over the top. Is it, is it Lenehan? Is it Dale Fry? Camera's on Dale Fry, yeah. And he knows, yeah. Once you're wrong side, it's difficult. Ross has got the legs on him, gets across him. But it took ages for them to make the decision. Here we go, Stam to look back at it. He's away, big heavy touch out of his feet there. Little shunt in his back. Continues goes down. into the area. Let's just have a look, where does he go down? Is he. I mean. Tussle, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's right on the line, but yeah, he goes into the box, doesn't he? And he's looking red. at the linesman on the far side, waiting for his flag to go up, whether he's told him on his headset. And they're having a look. Oh, do you know what? I think it's just outside Ross, obviously, his momentum, he goes into the box. There wasn't much of a protest from Fry, though. Thankfully, yeah, this is one of them, perhaps where the ref hasn't got the benefit of VAR to go and have a look at it, because the contact's outside, just outside the box, but by the time Ross goes over, he is in the box. They're going to have to make changes as well. It's going to be former Sunderland player Paddy McNair coming on in a moment. In fact, he might come on even before the penalty kick is taken. Ross Stewart has the ball in front of the North Stand here at the Stadium of Light. Will we see the substitution take place? before everyone's now making their way back to their seats who hadn't re yeah. returned at half-time. Get your refreshments in quicker. Yeah, miss the action, what's going on here? They're all coming out below us. Well, you've missed the penalty decision. 
That was right on the line. Stewart steps up. It's saved the first time. He scores oh, a rebound. Well, <laughs> and there you see big puff of the cheeks from Ross Stewart. Never in doubt. Keeper goes the right way. Stefan gets hands on it. Fortunately for Ross Stewart, straight back into his path on his left foot. Tucks in the rebound. 1-0 Sunderland. 1-0 to Sunderland here. The stadium of light and the game has changed with a red card. This time it's the opposition team. Well, it is, yeah, and you can't say Sunderland haven't deserved the lead, you know, from that first half performance alone, and straight on the front foot as well in this second half, and see, so keeper goes the right way, parries it back into his path, doesn't he? Problem he's got there, the goal, he goes past the ball, doesn't he? So he has to, he has to parry it there, and then second bite at it, Ross Stewart. Ball spinning on his left foot, and he just cushions it past the goalkeeper. Well, if you were still enjoying your prawn sandwiches, you might have missed that. Around yeah, us, <laughs> there was lots of empty seats. Relief on his face there, Ross Stewart. And just have a look now where the actual contact well, the, is slowly the, the right starts. Yeah, and it's there. And I think by the time, oh, oh I think it's, I think if I think Would if Ball gets involved, I think Ball looks at that. I think they're going to give a free kick. But red card nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, red card. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, goal scoring opportunity. Dan Neil wins it back. Danny Barr plays it forward. The goal scorer, Ross Stewart, takes it down. Gives it to Jack Clark. The crowd is so loud now inside the Stadium of Light. Clark, skipping, dodging, plays it inside. Edward Michu! There's Wins the corner. Nick. Yeah, it was there for him. Jack Clark just sucks two or three players in and he rolls it across to Michu. He can afford to take a touch or two. Tries to set himself and a little nick on it for the corner. That's Paddy McNair coming onto the pitch, finding his team a goal down. McNair has come on for Crooks, sacrificing a striker for a midfielder. Oh, <sighs> what a ball in that is. Stewart claims there was a touch there. Doesn't get the decision this time. Yeah. Let's have a look at it back there now. Amar just whips it into that near post area. Is it Tommy Smith? Yes, yeah, Tommy Smith. Let's have a look. I'm sure, if he kicks Ross's boot or not sure, but goal kick for Middlesbrough. And it's Paddy McNair. He's gone in at right centre half there, alongside Lenehan. Lisa forced to do some work here. He'll try and see it out, but he, there's not enough pace on it, so he has to kind of hook it. And now he clears it. Suddenly come again. Jack Clark's in here. He's definitely on side. Roberts is at the far post. If he can find him, Stewart's arriving now. Clark might go himself. Deflection. Ahmad. Those balls picked up by Elise here. Yeah, you now crowd are up on mate. Get the passes in to try and go and get that second goal, get the killer goal. Stewart trying to get round his man, he can't on that occasion. Wow, good start to the second half here. Certainly was, yeah. Even before the uh, yeah. before the goal, before the penalty Still decision, I thought the they possession. were on the front foot, yeah. Started the half well. Well, they left off really. And that forced Middlesbrough into a change that. This with a form team coming into this one. Yeah, it's like ours last week, isn't it? Luke got sent off. You take Patrick off to bring a defender on. Yep. Middlesbrough had to go the same route. And Paddy McNair has come on, the former Sunderland player. He made around 20 appearances for Sunderland. He was part of that deal from Manchester United, which involved Donald Love as well. In a season where most Sunderland fans would choose to forget, I think. Indeed. Dan Neil. Ahmad. Elise. Dan Neil, space and time on the ball now. We'll enjoy that. 
Yeah, just got to keep working the ball like Swansea did against us last week, isn't it? Sap the legs out of Middlesbrough. Jack Clark chops, goes back. Elise with space now. That extra man already showing Dan Neal. Roberts. Something needs Neal's feet a bit, but gives it to Mishu. Mishu gives it back off Roberts. Roberts trying to skip through the middle of them. All cannons off Dan Neal and still get it back. It's up to Middlesbrough now to come out and get it. Yeah, difficult one for them, isn't it? Man down, as you say there. They, you know, they've got to try and get back into the game, but not concede again too early on after going behind. There's Roscoe. It's gone from the penalty spot once again for Sunderland. Goal tally keeps on totting up. Dre Hume did Dan Nielsen have been patient with the ball here Ahmad far on that side now inside the area this is lovely football from Sunderland being so patient just passing around Middlesbrough they can't clear their lines either can they Danny no it's difficult there they're camped in their own third aren't they Middlesbrough really deep and Sunderland, as you say, just trying to look for that little opening, little five, ten yard balls into each other. Just trying to thread it in, in behind. Here we come again. Just couldn't get past the last man. Ballard picks it up, bounces up, shouts to shoot. Maybe does the wise choice and passes it to Jack Clark. Just behind Elise, he'll stretch to get there. He can't. And Housen plays it out. Falls. Tackled. But picked up in the middle by Middlesbrough. Akpom, been quiet in this game, really. He gets a free kick. His top goal scorer in the league, Truba yeah. Akpom. That's where we've got to be careful there. A little bit careless down the left hand side, give the ball away. And gives Middlesbrough the opportunity to get up the pitch and then say, well, we're at 1 0. They're always still in the game, aren't they? another yellow card in there. That was early on, yeah, force there, you see, picked up a yellow. He's arguing that penalty decision, I think. Well spotted, Danny. Housen stands over the set piece, plays it short. We'll try and build from this, Middlesbrough. Round the back, Whoa. spilled from Patterson. Akpom keeps it alive. Oh, well, were you as confident as Anthony Patterson there? Well, that's all it takes, isn't it? Yeah, we don't deal with that first ball in. They, they work it quite well, Middlesbrough from the free kick. And you can hear the fans thinking, why aren't we squeezing up? And they just drop it in behind. In behind, Trey Hume. Recycle it. Force. It's not a great strike. Let's see. Ross Stewart, isn't it, outside the post, arms up, thinks it's going past that far post. And yeah, Anthony Patterson down at his near post there. Warning sign, though, for Sunderland, let's say, we've seen it last week. Swansea get themselves in front and we hit back. This would be a big win for Sunderland if they were to hold out on it, but at the moment they're playing themselves into bother. He's falls. Gone for the shot! Patterson was behind at that time. Uh, Tommy Smith asking for the ball outside him against Mitu, ball into him, taking too long on the ball, he's got to have a picture of what's going on around him, gets caught on it, see force there, Tommy Smith, yeah, he's, he's not quite outside him, is he? he's asking for the ball. Dan Neal, Ahmad, Roberts, Ahmad gets it back, Stewart lays it off for Dan Neal, Elise is there, Jack Clark's the wide option, Clark going inside, looking for 
chances and opportunity. Sunderland. Roberts drills it in. Oh, Mishu with the shot. Yeah, it's a good block, isn't it? I think keepers beat. Well worked from Sunderland. Yeah, against down that right hand side, isn't it? We work it into Patrick Roberts. Let's have a look at it back. Jack Clark takes the ball across the pit into Ahmad, just feeds it into his path, and he pulls it back. And Mitch is there. Oh, it is. Paddy McNair gets the block in. Roberts. Dan Neal. Stewart. Waiting for the pass on to Jack Clark. Clark goes inside. Mishu picks it up. Dan Neal. Plenty options left and right. Delivered by Patrick Roberts. A deep one, but wasn't on the Sunderland head. It's quite easy in the end for Zach Steffen. Yeah, just stands it up. It's a little bit forced maybe from Patrick that time, but he's got to be patient and try and work the opening, as we did a minute ago for Michu. Pressure on Stefan here. Mallard's gone down, gets the free kick. Don't forget you can have your say on today's post-game programme. We're going to be joined by Julio Arco as well for that one. Use the hashtag AskDanny. Maybe it should be Ask Julio. Ask Julio as well, yeah. Take, take a little bit of pressure <laughs> off me today. <laughs> yeah, take part in that. And tell us where you're watching around the world as well. Use the hashtag AskDanny on social media. Talk about the game. Talk about the transfer window. Talk about that penalty decision. Someone to have a corner. It's another one to... Debate, isn't it, for the fans? Is it a penalty? Is it is it just outside when the contact is? But can't argue the red card. Someone will take it. No, that, that one you can't argue. Certainly. Middlesbrough preparing to make some changes beneath us as Ahmad delivers a corner. It's a teasing one, wasn't it? It was. Yes, yeah, that near post area. Roberts. Oh, and again, oh! Dan Ballard in there. He's gone down, man behind him. I thought he was wrong side. Tommy Smith, he's not really argued it, Dan Ballard. I'll tell you what it is, though, it's a wonderful ball in from Patrick Roberts. Let's have a look back. See on this angle what a ball in that is. No, he's on his way down, isn't he, Dan yeah, he's Ballard? Falling, I think. Do you know what? Sometimes you see that both players go down his wrong side, but I don't think there's enough contact there. I think we're going to see Cameron Archer soon, who was a person you pulled out in the pre-game programme. He's on loan from Aston Villa, forward. He's only 21 years of age, comes highly rated. Yeah, I think it's one of them when he's come in and you think he's going to change it. They've obviously been going well, but he's stuck with Crooks up top. But I just think he brings something different. He's quick, isn't he? So we try and play on the shoulder, especially when they're down a man as well. They're going to look for counter-attacks. It's where Danny Barton, Dan Ballard have got to be switched on when we turn possession over. Lost control of the ball and Middlesbrough will try and put some passes together. But it's charged down by Trey Hume, that man again. Yeah, he goes impressive, doesn't he? When, he? when he makes his mind up, he goes in there, doesn't he? And again, he's managed to win the ball. There's the substitution. It's Marcus Falls who makes way for Cameron Archer. Just having a look, it looks like Tuberak Pomer is going to be the, the lone striker still. And Archer will just play for him in this right hand side. Well, 
Williams is in on Archer, who's just come on. Yeah, good again from Agilise. Like Trey Hume on the other side. Decision making's been good today. Then them tackles, the timing them well. Has he injured himself though? Stayed down. He felt something on his heel there, I think. Bit of cramp. This is his first game back, remember? Well, he's looking at Tony Burry. He's saying, oh no, not again. Here we go. I keep talking about that revolving door, isn't it, in the defenders' department? Sunderland have already lost Corey Evans early in the game to injury. They don't need to lose any more. This one just does look like a bit like cramp. Yeah, I'm just looking at the at the bench there. In. Yeah, the bench for Sunderland. Bailey not as strong as Mowbray would have liked at this stage of the season, of course. Bailey's on there. Yeah, it'd be a natural replacement. You've got obviously Ellis Taylor, to more of a midfielder. It's left footed if he wants to keep the balance on this left hand side if Aji's struggling. Abdullah Bar could do a job in the middle for to move some other people around. Do see Dan Neal at left back again? Well, he's done it. <laughs> yeah. He could go to a, obviously a back three with the three centre backs and go with the wing backs, but. I'm sure that's what they're discussing down below us. There's no one immediately being called in for Sunderland. Billy's still as far away as he can get as a sub warming up. I suppose nothing stopping them warming up behind the goal over yeah, there. But not a great day to be a substitute either, <laughs> is it? <laughs> been there, we've all been there. Your toes are freezing, your kneecaps are freezing. In. Talking of substitutes, Danny, the last time Sunderland beat Middlesbrough in the league at home was on the uh, September 2008, 2-0 win, Michael Chopper, two late so, goals. Yeah, you were on the bench that day. Right, yeah, I think so. Did, I think, did Stuart Downing miss a penalty? I think he blazed one over. There was a game there where he missed a penalty. Yeah, yeah someone's being think called he in. can continue. Bailey's and there's Bailey right. stripped. Well, his afternoon is done, and he's done all right. Coming back into the side here, Danny. He is, yeah, well, it's going to be, have to be quick here, Bailey's ready to go. I don't think it's going to happen just, just yet. Well, looks like Trey Hume has come across the left back anyway. So I'm playing with ten men for now. That's all right, though, because so are Middlesbrough. <laughs> after the sending off. Oh, Angie's come back Dale up. Dale Fry. Bailey's fully stripped and ready to go. Angie's just going on to make the numbers up, I think. Walking wounded. Space down here for Jack Clark. If Elise can find him, he goes inside again to Trey Hume. Yeah, it's a bit, bit strange, you know. You call Trey Hume across, he's all of a sudden end up in the middle of the park. Daniel's and he's come back on hobbling. Yeah, he might be called into action here. Oh, we're in trouble. Cut back. Akpom's in the middle. Cut out by Danny Bart. Oh, Dan Neal, lovely, gets past Riley McCree. Stewart, he's inside the area, puts it across. Yeah. The issue couldn't get on the end of it, Jack Clark picks it up. Excellent from Dan Neal again, wasn't it? Just chopped his yep. man on the edge of the box like he wasn't there. Fizzes a lovely ball out to Ross Stewart. Mishu. Dan Neal. Yeah, Trey Hume, you see now, has made his way back over to right back. And perhaps a little misunderstanding as to what was going on. I don't think Adji wanted to come back on. He's hobbling around out there. And Dan Neal looking for Jack Clark, who brings it down on his chest. Goes back to Elise, who's carrying that injury. Possibly could be replaced in a moment or two by Bailey Wright, who's ready to come on. Yeah, problem Middlesbrough got there. They see the camp in, and then the two, two are isolated up there, Archer and Chubrak pump. Distance is massive between them. Well, he's gone back down. Well, we'll see the, the change now. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's done there, Aji, but it's good to see him walking. I think whether it's serious or not, but I think it's been excellent today coming back in, as you've said, in a, in a game of this magnitude against your, your local rivals. and. He's been excellent, timed his head as well, his tackles have been well. He's had a good run out. Free kick to Middlesbrough. 
yeah. three takes it. Bailey's gone in at right back. Looks like it is a back four stayed in there. Trey Hume's come across the left back. Housing through the middle. Akpom's gone. So Zarcha. Be picked up in the middle though. Shot from distance. And it goes over in the end. Yeah, a little bit of an argument going on between there, Michu and. Dan oh, Neal having yeah. a, a few words with each other and just a couple of warning signs for Middlesbrough. Yeah, down the man, but see that scoreline up there, they're still right in this game. They've had a couple of opportunities now. Hidden Hackney's shot going over the top. Still 20 odd minutes to go as well, and ideally, you know, we've got to push on and try and get that second goal. It just takes that pressure off a little bit. Trey Hume's gone walkabout again, he's currently centre forward. <laughs> Roberts. Gets it back off Bailey Wright. Dan Neal through the middle. Mishu. Gets it returned off Trey Hume, who stayed forward. Here's Jack Clark now. Ballard. Sunderland trying to make Middlesbrough come out. We'll find some gaps. Try and exploit them. Is it too much on there? No, he's kept it in. Ahmad. Stewart. Oh, Roberts was always falling. Yeah, he's off balance, isn't he? It just sits up for him. He got a little bit excited and. Thrashes at it and gets it wrong, yeah, shaking his head there. But, th yeah, that's what we're doing. Again, I keep going back to Swansea last week. They, they didn't move the ball too quick with a tempo around the pitch, just gradually moving five, ten yards up the pitch until you, you're getting them back into that, that final third, and then that's where you've got to be short and sharp. And you look at the players we've got out there, Ahmad Patrick, you know, Jack Clark, busy and bright around the box. See Tony Mowbray, he'll be concerned. For what he's seen since they've gone down to ten men, Middlesbrough still in that game, as we said. Ballard misses his challenge, but Trey Hume's there to try and clean up. McGree, it's a wild kick on it. Goes to Akpom, but then goes out of play. Adam McNair. And Archer does well. To release McCree. McCree goes back. Hackney. McNair. I just feel the crowd getting a little bit restless as well. Wanting a little bit more from Sunderland. And Sunderland need to be mentally strong as well as physically here, don't they? To see this game out. They can go on and get more goals. Yeah, they'll know themselves, you know, they want to go and step on and get that second goal, but don't get caught on the on the counter attack with a sucker punch. Just managing the game, you know, a phrase and a term that gets used a lot in the game, isn't it? Manage the game when you've got the extra man. Trey Hume does really well there to not allow Smith to get on it. Yeah, see Tommy Smith as well just Signaling to his teammates, come and try and box him in in this corner. Yeah, a bit of urgency needed, maybe, about Sunderland at the moment, just to try and get yeah, some tempo, energy on the yeah, ball, get the tempo. Feel it, you feel it in the stadium, yep. can't you? The crowd a little bit nervous as well, trying to get the players going again. Stewart gets a flick on, hasn't gone very far, though. Smith heads it back, comes off the back of Stewart, and Agpon picks it up, Dan Ballard's in the way, he'll try and claim it that it didn't come corner. off him, but it did. And that'll be another corner, their sixth of the afternoon so far. Again, that comes back from ourselves that two or three players went for the same ball, didn't they? And Ricochet goes into two rack pumps, pass, gets the corner. Johnny Housen will take it.
and from Ballard. And as far as McCree, Hackney can't get past Dan Neal. He floats one forward, but it's too much on it. Goes out of place and will step up a few yards though. Yeah, disappointing from Middlesbrough's point of view. You know, they're obviously going to be relying on set plays and quality into the box, and that wasn't great from the corner, was it? Perhaps disappointing from Sunderland's point of view that Middlesbrough at the moment are dictating the game. Yeah, they're down to ten men. Exactly. Course. Yeah, having a spell, aren't they? And they made a change, and they brought Archer on. Looks sharp. Only Mowbray thinking about what he can do to get a grip of this game again, because really up until the goal, it's been all Sunderland. Hume gets in there, steals it for Sunderland, goes inside, looking for Stewart. Couldn't find him. Millsburg come again. Housen, able to turn around. Crowd getting restless inside the stadium of light. They want to see their, their team in possession. Making the 11 men count. Got to give it to Middlesbrough, they've really come into the, the game since that big incident. Cleared by Bart, Stuart was offside, he leaves it. Yeah, there's the crowd again, wanting more from the players. You see Middlesbrough, man down as you say, Frankie, spending time on the ball. Again. Cut out by Bart. Archer spins on it, lays it off for McGree. Chance from distance, takes a deflection. Oh, He'll go for a corner. Smith's yeah. shot. There is, yeah, we've got to liven up a little bit here. They get a little bit fortunate down that left side. Ricochet back into his path. Ball cut out by Danny Bart. Recycle it. Tommy Smith gets the strike away off Jack Clark. Another corner for Middlesbrough. It's Giles who's going to take it on the far side to us here in the Stadium of Light. In the 78th minute, Sunderland 1, Middlesbrough 0. It's high from Ahmad, still not clear from Sunderland. Ballard can't get his head on it. Roberts gets something on it. Again, you can't help but feel if Sunderland commit players forward from those situations, Danny. They would have someone well, to hit in these Well, you mentioned moments. it before, we've brought everyone back and we've got the extra man and we're still bringing everyone back in there. It's a big shift on it. Hume can see it, Stewart who's on the ball right now, steps inside, surrounded by Middlesbrough players, loses the ball, Housen goes down, referee plays on, Akpom, Hackney, McGree waits for the contact, doesn't go down, Smith, back to McCree. Hackney's inside the area, puts one right across, Archer was near it, so yeah, they need to get the heads there. together yeah, here. to liven up, yeah, you can feel it coming. Pressure. We switch off again there, but you know the bodies we've got back and this little threaded ball in, we're not matching runs. We're going to see a double change in a moment for Sunderland. It looks like Abdullah Barr and Jefferson Bennett will be coming on. That'll change things hopefully from an energy point of view, from a Sunderland perspective. Yeah, even after we got the goal, we worked the ball well, didn't we, for five, ten minutes after that. And you know, stroking it round, working, being patient, just as if the players have got a little bit nervous, knowing they're in front, unsure whether, do we go and try and get that second goal, do we just try and keep hold of the ball, and it's been a case of neither, really. Borough will take heart from that, won't they, their possession there. Proving they're still in this game. In the 80th minute, Sunderland 1, Middlesbrough 0. This is better. Yeah, the one thing... Michael Carrick will be disappointed. They've had two corners in the last five minutes or so, and they've both been terrible deliveries into the box. He's Jack Clark. Mishu turns. Ahmad. There's another ball on there for Roberts. Here he is. Ahmad's with him. It's Roberts. Does he fancy one? Plays in. Ahmad. Can he get a shot away, Ahmad? He can! Yes! He's scored! Yes, there it is. And it's those two again, isn't it? The combination down the right hand side. Excellent in the first half, start of this second half as well. And as we just said there, we've been on the back foot for five, ten minutes or so. And out of nothing, the two of them working well again down that right-hand side. Patrick involved, throws it back into Ahmad's path and he strokes it past the goalkeeper. I think it is near post, isn't it? Wrong foots him. 
And there's that second goal we've been after. Ten minutes to go, takes the pressure off. Here we go, Danny. I'm looking at it back. Yeah, work it well across the pitch. Patient again into Michu, into Ahmad. Patrick picks it up, driving at them, sucks a couple of players in, little reverse. Does his stuff there, Ahmad, quick feet, bang. Cooper, no chance to be fair. I think he's got a couple of defenders. You'll see it from this angle now. Men in front of him. I think it's Lennar here in front of him. And he just beats him at his near post and should have had one in the first half. Gets one in the second half. It's just that little movement, that all in one. See Hackney there, goes with the ball. Waiting going to his left hand side. Connor just quick enough. And it's a great finish from Ahmad. And I think that's his seventh of the season, is it? Yeah, meanwhile, Danny, there's some substitutions taking place. Jack Clark and Patrick Roberts making way for Jefferson Bennett and Abdullah Bar. Yeah, and I think Patrick's been excellent. Jack as well at times, trying to get us going. But for me, Patrick and Ahmad, all afternoon, been a threat for Middlesbrough. Let's just have a look there, a little change-up, I think. You see Ahmad's gone out to that right-hand side now for Patrick. Jefferson Bennett. Straight swap for Jack Clark on the left. And just like in September 2008, Sunderland uh, two goals up against Middlesbrough. That's the last time they beat them in the league at home. Middlesbrough, the form team in the championship. Outside the top two. It's been a good job from Sunderland this afternoon. If they can come out with all three points, as Jefferson Bennett puts it down the line, trying to get it around his man. Referee's not having any of that. With the change, another former Sunderland player coming on. And it's uh, Duncan Watmore who suffered with a couple of nasty injuries in his time at Sunderland, but he did score some good goals for Sunderland, and he was a good servant to the club, and always a nice person to pump yeah, into was, yeah. around the club. You know, he gives his all, doesn't he? Hundred percent, good, good energy. But coming on was it two 0 down with eight minutes to go plus stoppage time. Play continues. Today's attendance, 42,594 inside the Stadium of Light. It's not bad, is it? Not bad, they were 12th Sunderland before a ball was kicked this afternoon in the Championship. Second tier of English football, of course. Still bringing in over 40,000 on a home game. Impressive. I think we can get back up to ninth today, can't we, I think? Go ahead, uh, West Brom. It's tight, isn't it? You're looking at that table. A couple of wins change all things. Do you see Blackburn got the first draw yesterday? Did indeed, yeah. <laughs> 28 games, wasn't it? What an anomaly that was. Unbelievable. Yeah. Just look at Blackburn sat it. I think the fifth now while they dropped to fifth, but minus four goal difference. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to join us in the post-game programme. Have your say about this game or anything that's on your mind about Sunderland Football Club. Use the hashtag AskDanny on social media. Anthony Patterson is forced into a quick clearance. Stewart coming forward for Sunderland. Ahmad to the right. Stewart going to go by himself? Oh... Yeah, I thought he was in two minds there, whether to roll it into Ahmad's path, but just got it out of his feet and gets the strike away. Sunderland player down on the far dance. side as well, following that challenge in the build-up to that. Yeah, I think it's Dan Michu, Neil, isn't it? Dan Neil on Mishu. Yeah, it's Mishu, you're right. Yeah, every right to take the strike on there, Ross just shifts it away from the defender, doesn't he? Puts his foot through it, but always on the rise. Mishu back on his feet.
Lampard trying to cut inside from an advanced position. Here's Archer competing with Dan Neal in the middle. Archer gets away from him. Watmore's gone to the left. Agpom to the right. He runs into Dan Ballard. I thought Sullivan were going to deal with it, but it goes back to Middlesbrough. There'll be some time added on to this game as well, so Sullivan still need to be careful. Combination of Sullivan players get it back. Stewart. Oh, oh, oh Ahmad's on if anyone can see him. <laughs> he was on. He was, yeah. Big switch was on, wasn't it? In between full back centre half. Games just dropped to walking pace. He's Abdullah Bar, the crowd is singing his name. Jefferson Bennett trying to get away down this touchline, just goes out of play. Mowbray wants a free kick, I don't think it's going to be any more than a throw. Just waiting for someone to make a decision there, the ref's looking at the linesman and eventually they give it to Sunderland. He has got a free, free kick. kick. <laughs> He'll give that then. Referee was shaking his head at the thought. But they just forget that the crowd haven't got headsets on as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. to <laughs> well, that's know a, what's going on. That's the point there, isn't there? McNair has to deal with this one. Abdullah Bar's near him. He's going to get the throw. McNair's unhappy with the challenge. Middlesbrough could be in here, just clips the heels of Ahmad as Housen try to come forward with it, Abdullah Bar, he comes forward for Sunday, he's clipped there surely. And Housen's got to be careful, he picked up a, a yellow very early on. Yeah, I don't know what I think, that if he hadn't booked him there, that's possibly a book, he's wrong side isn't he, a little bit of frustration in it as well. friendly rivalry <laughs> banter from the crowd he's done Neil he's been great this afternoon plays it out wide to someone else who's been great Trey Hume yeah do you know you you get to that stage on your man of the match time and go on then pick four one. or five out there for me Oof, back lad's been solid Ballard Danny Bar excellence as well Trey Hume Dan Neil Ahmad Patrick Roberts I feel Tough decision, isn't it? It's a good one to have, though. Um, who would I go for? I'm going to go Trey Hume. Yeah, I'm going to go Trey. I think he's been excellent since he's come into the team. Uh, he's, he's been chopped between full-back and uh, on either side. Uh, I think he's been excellent getting forward. He's timed his tackles well this afternoon. So Trey Hume's I'm Danny's go man Trey of the Hume, match. Yeah. Who's your man of the match? Get in touch, let us know. Use the hashtag AskDanny and join us in the post-game programme. Tell us where you're watching around the world. We'd love to know where our Sunderland faithful are this afternoon. Get your thoughts in now, just hearing if you get them in now, you've got a good chance to get them in the post-game programme where we're going to be joined by Julio Arca pitch side. Fantastic stuff here on SFC Live. Housen coming through and winning it in the middle, Watmore's there for Middlesbrough, he'll go on one of his runs which we saw so many times for Sunderland he's got round the back of Trey Hume and gets a corner nothing more five minutes added on the ten man side will hope to try and get something in that time we'll start with this corner yeah they'll be wanting a better delivery than what they've seen in the second half been very disappointing Johnny Housen on this one it's the eighth of the afternoon Sullivan's only had four. Out from Ballard. 
Wild shot from Smith comes in, comes out to Housen. It's a stretch from Ballard, goes into the middle. There's bodies everywhere. Ballard clears it up. Akpom wanted a penalty. And Abdullah Bar could be in for Sunderland. Takes a good first touch and then goes down. And I don't think there's anything in the challenge from Giles. No, he's having to wait for the ball over his shoulder and Giles gets back at him. Couldn't get away from him. Half a shout as well for Middlesbrough for a penalty, I think, in the six-yard box. Nothing more than that, I don't think. <laughs> Some of the fans have found a new song now, Abdullah Bar's name. Trey Hume, your man of the match, wins the ball back and keeps it in, then goes inside, but he's dispossessed by Watmore and gets back himself and wins it back. Who's your man of the match? Who are you watching around the world? And who you've been impressed with this afternoon? Is a shot for the penalty? It's a strong Ooh. challenge from Billy Wright on. Yeah, he's into the back of Akpom. him, isn't he? He's Akpom again. What more picks it up, gets his head down. <laughs> Straight Hume again. And Jefferson Bennett, can he advance with it? He has to go inside. He's carrying it, gives it to Bailey Wright. It's a little bit behind him. Abdullah Bar. Ahmad. We'll just need to see these next few minutes out. The you know, start from the Roker end. Trey Hume gives it to Danny Bart, who again has been great at the back for Sunderland. Dan Neal's been instrumental in the middle. His physical games, come on, leaps and bounds this season. Yeah, it has, yeah, you can see him grown, can't you, as a player. Dominating the ball in games as well in recent weeks. Just bounces off Jefferson Bennett and Middlesbrough allowed to come forward. This is Hackney. Dan Neal tries to get around him. Slide from Billy Wright. Sullen could be in here. Ahmad picks it up. Stewart to the left. Abdullah Bars with him. Hasn't sprinted past him. Maybe that's what Ahmad wanted. Yeah, I think just slowing the game down. I wasn't sure whether to go and try and get a third and, or just look after the ball. Oh, laser out from the Sunderland fans. Just keep moving it around the pitch. Dan Neal. It's a back of Stewart. Ballard. It's retiring those ten men of Middlesbrough right down into these final few minutes of a time. Shouts of easy from the Sunderland fans. Loose pass in the middle. Clean sheet would be handy, Danny, because we haven't had one of them for yeah, a couple of weeks. Looking earlier on, I think seven seven games ago, that Millwall game was it, first game back after the World Cup. It's Millwall who we have next here on SAFC Live. We'll just see how this develops from Archer. Plays it across, Akpom's there, but goes wide, he's claiming the corner, doesn't get there. Yes, next weekend, Sunderland are back in FA Cup action against Fulham down at Craven Cottage. We won't be carrying that game here on SAFC Live. Uh, Danny's having a weekend off in a spa somewhere, <laughs> presumably. <laughs> oh. um, but then we'll be back in action uh, on the 4th of February. That's against Middlesbrough, uh, sorry, Millwall, um, down at the Den. Somewhere I assume you've been many times. Yeah, I've had a couple of run-ups at the Den. Lovely one in front of the locals, that one. Just see that one there, that's the first real opportunity Archer's had to, to use his pace, wasn't it? Getting into the box, so come on at a, a difficult time for Middlesbrough. Referee brings it okay. to an end, Danny. It's finished, Sunderland 2, Millsborough 0. Yeah, and I think regardless of uh, you know the sending off and that, I thought we were much the better team. We've got to be honest, I thought we were excellent from the first whistle today. Pressed them really high, didn't let them settle, should. And could have gone in at two, maybe three up at half-time. Yes, they had a good opportunity, which Anthony Patterson tipped round his post. Setting off back on the front foot, get the get the penalty early on, put that away, and then Middlesbrough did have a little stint, didn't they, with the ten men? But I think overall you can't argue the result. 
clean sheet, as you say, big plus. Um, yeah, and we march on. We do indeed. The final score here at the Stadium of Light. It's Sunderland 2, Middlesbrough 0.